Welcome back. In the previous segment, we set up the Neumann MT48. In this video, I'm going to show you how to operate the MT48. Let's start with the mixer. On the left, you see the four analog input channels. Next comes the ADAT group channel, so this fader controls all eight ADAT channels. If you want to adjust these channels individually, press on the name tag and in the pop-up menu select Expand. To hide the individual channels, go to the group channel fader and select Collapse. You may wonder why we still have ADAT channels, although we disabled ADAT in the USB I.O. settings. That's to allow you to use those inputs for monitoring purposes only, if you wish. If you don't use the ADATs, you can just simply mute the group. So this is the basic setup. Let's start the DAW and do our first recording. For demonstration purposes, we're using Cubase by Steinberg, but it's pretty much the same with any recording application. On startup, your software may ask you which driver to use. If not, go to the respective settings in your DAW. Some applications may display two drivers, MT48 and MT48 High Precision. The latter works with 32-bit resolution. Either one should work fine. In the driver settings, you can choose the buffer size. A small buffer will give you lower latency, but causes higher CPU load. A bigger buffer will give you better CPU performance, but causes higher latency. 64 samples is usually a good starting point. The latency shown here only relates to your DAW software. The MT48 mixer is always ultra low latency, irrespective of the driver buffer settings. Now go to the input settings. In most DAWs, you need to activate the inputs of your audio interface. So now we'll create four stereo pairs. For mic line and line instrument inputs, as well as mic line post effects and line instrument post effects. And I can rename those pairs according to their inputs. Most DAWs will automatically assign their stereo out to the first two output channels of your audio interface, but it's a good idea to double check. Okay, everything seems right. Let's hear if we get sound. We have an audio file in track one, and now I hit play. Great, it works. Let's do a test recording. I'll add two new audio tracks. Track one will be assigned to microphone input one or microphone input left. And track two will be assigned to microphone input one post effects. To get to the preamp page, press the home button to switch to the alternate mixer view. Press preamp. As we're using a condenser mic, we need to activate phantom power. Then dial in sufficient gain. Welcome to the Neumann MT48. Welcome to the Neumann MT48. Welcome to the Neumann MT48. That will do. It's always a good practice to leave about 10 dB of headroom. To show you that we can record with and without processing at the same time, I'm going to activate the EQ. This is a clean sounding equalizer, but to make the processing obvious, I'm going to create a sort of telephone voice using massive high and low cuts. Dynamics can also be recorded. The reverb, however, is for monitoring only, so it is never recorded with the input signal. In the DAW, I'm going to record to both audio tracks we just created. Welcome to the Neumann MT48. Let's listen to the tracks individually. We have the unprocessed audio on track number one. Welcome to the Neumann MT48. And the processed audio post effects on track number two. Welcome to the Neumann MT48. As you can see, the Cubase output comes up on DAW1 in the MT48 mixer. You have a dedicated mixer for each output pair. So when you press speakers A, or speakers B, headphones one, 
headphones too, you get a different mixer. If you don't need different mixes, each output can follow mix one. To do this, go to settings, monitoring, and scroll down to the bottom. Here you can switch mix two, three, and four to follow mix one. If you switch mix 2 to follow mix 1, you get the same mix on both speaker pairs. But you can still dial in a dedicated monitor mix for each headphone output. Also, the large dial still controls the volume for each output individually. So that's it. Of course, the MT48 has a lot more functions and options, but this is all you need to know to operate the MT48. I hope I could give you a good impression of the Neumann MT48. Let me summarize some of its highlights. The sound quality of the MT48 is simply outstanding. The dynamic range of 136 dB is unheard of. And it finally allows you to capture every detail of even your best microphones. The headphone outputs are super powerful and ultra low impedance. In fact, they outperform most external headphone amps. The MT48 may be compact in size, but it has everything you need for your personal studio. And if you want to record a whole band, you can always add more inputs and outputs via ADAT and AES67. Monitoring is just as important. Singers sing better and musicians play better when they get inspiring sound in their headphones. That's why the MT48 includes a DSP-powered mixer with sophisticated EQ and dynamics processing in every channel, which you can use for monitoring only, or you can print the processing to the track. You can even do both and record the processed and unprocessed signal at the same time. Despite all this complexity, its color touchscreen makes the MT48 easy to operate. Thank you for watching and have fun recording.